Happy Monday, Liberty Lions. And if you like to start your day like I do with a cup of coffee, I've got something amazing to tell you about. And if you don't, well, this probably just isn't the pre-roll advertisement for you. I would recommend just skipping ahead about a minute. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to waste your time. If you don't, if you don't like coffee, I'm not going to convince you in the next 45 seconds. But if you do, I do hope you'll try out our amazing new coffee brand called The Morning Roar. We have partnered with our friends at Anarcho Coffee to bring you this delicious medium dark roast. And when I say delicious, I am not pulling your chain, my friends. I actually consume this coffee myself. I imbibe it. I take a little sip, and I make that sound. Ah, and I know that I am now ready to start my day. I'm ready to roar my day away with the morning roar. So please do check it out at lionsofliberty.com slash coffee. You'll get 10% off your first order. And if you join our Patreon at $10 or higher, you will get a hefty 15% discount. And trust me, that discount is going to add up once you try this coffee. It is absolutely fantastic. Again, that's lionsofliberty.com slash coffee. You'll also find links to everything you need over in today's show notes, which you can find at lionsofliberty.com slash 412. It's time to start your day, just like the Lions of Liberty do, with a morning roar. You know, I've actually really perfected the art of, of editing. Like, I've gone through phases. Like, when I first started, I edited myself. <laughs> Come on. What are you laughing about, Johnny? Because you haven't perfected shit, dude. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Johnny's like the dad you don't want to talk to when you grow up. Welcome to the Lions of Liberty podcast. Here's your host, your guide, your shining beacon of liberty, Mark Clare. All right, friends, and welcome, because it's time for a very special edition of Libertarians in Living Rooms Drinking Liquor. It's special because we're not all drinking, no. Two of the three of us will be drinking, uh, and the first one who is drinking is one of my favorite Libertarian podcasters of all time. Of course, podcasts, Libertarian podcasts have only been around for like six years, I think. But anyway, uh, he's the one and only host of Blast Off with Johnny Rocket and Raylene Lightheart. He's the one and only Johnny Adams. Johnny, are you ready to roar? I am ready to roar! I knew it. You sound so much more fired up than the first time we recorded this introduction five minutes ago. (laughs) I'm like all fucking jacked up now. Thanks. Well, what are you drinking, man? Um, I'm drinking, uh, I think, Moon Juice by um, a a beer company out here in Arizona. Can't remember. It's Moon Juice, though. Well, they didn't pay you for the pay us for the plug, so I don't care. Fuck them. Fuck them. Just say I'm drinking, you know, some kind of IPA. I'm drinking some IPA. Uh, and I am drinking an Angry Orchard, which is sort of a pussy drink, but I don't care. It tastes like, tastes like apple juice, and it's yummy, so screw you all. And while I'm at it, I also have a bottle of Fireball left over from uh, the Democratic debates because I, I decided to torture myself in many ways during that debate. Uh, next up. Oh, my God. Look at him now. It's another of my favorite libertarian podcasters of all time and present, which is the same thing in the history of libertarian podcasting. It's Chris Bangle of We Are Libertarians. Chris, are you ready to roar? What was that? Was that a die? A, a fa- it was a cat falling. A, a cat that can speak and is falling. It was a primal scream and uh, a concerning noise to my neighbors upstairs. Oh, okay. Well, what's up, man? And you are, what are you drinking? Anything? Uh, uh, I all? just pissed my pants and I'm wringing out my underwear and drinking the urine uh, from the day. The iced tea soaked urine from yes. your day. Right, well, Sweet tea enough. from Zaxby's recycled. Why? Why would you say that? <laughs> Why wouldn't Why? I? <laughs> Uh, I mean, come on. You're just mad that you didn't think of this drink first. No, Spangle I mean, doesn't drink, but uh, I did sign the executive order allowing him uh, to this one-time appearance on a drinking show because <laughs> I'd say nobody frankly, likes we're just an short al- on guests. It's that simple. I, I don't know. What I'd say, say nobody <laughs> likes an alcoholic, but you two are doing well. Yeah, well, we like each other, so That's yeah, right. we're, we're cool. That proves that. You know, yeah. b- before that we got on the show, and the, the whole format of these shows is that, there, is that there is no format. We just hop on with little to no plan and start talking. But before Chris hopped on with us, me and Johnny were, were starting to reminisce a little bit, I guess you might say, about uh, you know lessons in, 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 in podcasting, the things that we take from it, and that sort of thing. And Johnny was about to ask me a, a, very, uh, a very, very big mind-opening question. Uh, right when Chris hopped on. So do you want you want to just ask 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 the all of us? Ask the all of us? Am I already getting a little tipsy? Ask the all of us, Johnny. Ask us all. Yes. Um, so like, when did you know that gay porn was your thing? That is not <laughs> how that question came out the first time. 
and frankly, I'm offended because I I've I heard <laughs> I heard what are you studying at, at church? What did you hear, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did you hear man. something different? Uh, like? Chris, I heard the same goddamn thing. Yeah, that's no, no, what you no, said, no, right, no, Johnny? No, Mark, no, what are you gay? <laughs> First of all, what's wrong with that? Second of all, that's right. uh, Nothing. Uh, again, not not the advertised yeah. question. Not wrong. No, no. Uh, seriously, what I was going to say is, though, when did you as a podcaster, I mean, we all have that aha moment, right? All right where we're doing our thing. And we're like, fuck, yeah, I got it. I got this shit. I know where I'm at. Things are moving. This is the this is what this sets the precedence for the other shows that I've done later in life. What was your aha moment in podcasting for Lines of Liberty? Uh, I, I, it, part of me wants to say Ron Paul, but the truth is I didn't get Ron Paul on until like my, my 200th episode. But I, I think the moment for me was when, um, well, there's several different moments in progression where you're like, oh, now I'm at this level. Now I'm at this level. I mean, yeah. even getting Justin, an, an, Justin Amash recently was like, an, oh, now I'm at this level because now I'm being linked to in The Hill which and Forbes, which is just insane. So there's several of those moments along the way. But I think right. my first one was actually when I got Tom Woods on because he, you know, he, that was the first time. I mean, I had had a lot of people on the show like uh, way early that just came on out of nowhere when I was nothing. No one had heard of me. But I was always kind of hesitant to ask Tom Woods on. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because he was more than just like a celebritarian in just the niche way like Walter Block or Mark Thornton or Glenn Jacobs those are all guys that were on in my first I think five oh episodes who literally just came on because I just emailed them out of the blue and said hey I'm starting a podcast would you be nice enough to come on and they all said yes and that was awesome but I didn't ask Tom for a long time because he had started his podcast at the same time and he was doing his five days a week and my shitty one was one day a week and I just felt like he was on a totally different level which he is uh, he but is. when I just emailed Tom Woods and he had actually linked to our website a couple times randomly so it wasn't like he had never necessarily heard of us because he still just, does, yeah. And he still does, that son of a bitch. Um, but yeah, I mean, when when he just said, when I emailed him casually, I think it was like 60 or so episodes in, and he said, yeah, sure, sounds good, why not? I was like, oh, awesome. <laughs> like, like he just he said it almost like we were peers, like just, just the way he casually uh, responded to it. At least that's how I felt. He, maybe in his mind he was like, who is this schmuck? Uh, fine, I guess I'll do it. No, but, uh, <laughs> okay, so Mark, that's great that you're talking about that, but I, I meant more like you. Like, oh, did what? I answer a totally wrong question? <laughs> uh, yeah, you did. You're like, this is my benchmark and how cool I am with, with interviews. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like you, like you personally, like, dude, like we all had a moment where we're like, hey, how's it going? Yeah, my name's Mark Claire. Welcome to my show. You mean Hi. when I, I like I nailed being a podcast host? Like where you felt well, like th this you is going to tie back in Johnny because this is where the story's going. If you just listen for a minute, because God, at the end of that, at the end of that interview. God. Tom had an amazing write-up, and in the interview, he said, I love, you know, he, I, I, the exact quote is posted somewhere on our website, but the essential quote of it is, he said, you know, I, I just love when I go on podcasts or have interviews where it's not, it's obviously not just a list of canned questions that are being asked, you know, one after another, just no matter what the answer was. It was actually having an engaging conversation, and Mark was really able to draw out questions and answers for me that actually Ooh. made me think, Ooh. and actually, I actually stumped him on a question that he, like, didn't have a total exact answer for. He said, you know, I actually, I actually have to think about that one a little more. So that is where it was going. It's more than just that I got Tom Woods on. It was also that Tom Woods thought I was a great interviewer and pointed out the things that, that I felt were the qualities I was trying to sort of grow as an interviewer of All having right. more real conversations as opposed to just like every every canned radio interview you ever hear, it's obviously they're just reading seven questions in a row. Like there's hardly <laughs> yeah. any engagement on, on a lot you. of this we stuff. We got Mark. We got you. We, I, we got you, brother. Johnny, got you got can't you. team me up for a rant while no, I'm no, drinking no, no, and, no, and no, it's no, not no, expect no, to get a rant. Like what, God, do, you, what yeah, do you want from got, me? Got, you got goddamn point, right? Goddamn. Hey, hey, right. you fucking Man, idiot for you talking on a podcast. Don't you talk on your own goddamn podcast. should have just been me and Chris having a nice, lovely chat soberly in the okay. afternoon over coffees right, chris <laughs> goddamn what about you man what was your moment interrupt you every time you go on a rant johnny it's gonna be great i Stay feel tuned. like we've Fuck i feel you. like we've had so many no. different so many <laughs> i'm kidding dude you're no. like dr evil now <laughs> shushing scott all right right and go. no i feel like we've had set i feel like we've had several different iterations of the show and there's two that kind of stand out to me and it would be probably early 2017, late 2016, maybe. And it was when we were really trying uh, to uh, to perfect like the ensemble cast and kind of be more comedic based. And, and it was a very funny show. And and we we started doing a lot of stuff that was just like people would catch on to the inside jokes and would talk about it. 
And it's like when other people start talking to you back about your podcast for the first time, you go, oh, I'm doing something that people like. The first inclination of that was actually Tom Woods. It was 2013. It was like late 2013. <laughs> I like how and the answer Tom, to this question is always Tom Woods. <laughs> it is, yes. And That's kind of my moment too. Yeah. And we had somebody at <laughs> YAL Ohio say that he was recommending our show when he was giving speeches at y'all events in 2013. So that was a big moment. I don't think he does that for us anymore. But no, now uh, that he's listened a few times, he, yeah. he doesn't do it quite as much. <laughs> but I, but I will say that. Once when my co-host left in late 2017, it was like, oh, the show is going to be totally different than that chemistry that we had spent four years building. And now what do I do? And I got really into the studying of everything and built a research team of people and rolled out a bunch of new podcasts. And we really started focusing more on policy and like what was going on in the news. And I would say that sometime in late 2018, there were a couple shows where I think it was like 242-ish, somewhere around there, where I just hung up the headphones at the end of that. And I went, that was really good. I felt really good about what I did on that show. Like, I would always go, wow, Greg was really funny on that show or Harry was really insightful on that show. But I never felt like I was personally that good. I always have said that I'm the weakest part of We Are Libertarians. And it was late 2018 when I really started to feel out like, okay, this is where I'm, this is where I'm headed. This is where, what, like I started to go, okay, this is my craft, I guess. So I, don't, I think it was episode 242 where we talked about Jordan Peterson and it was just kind of like, a, a, almost like a legal case laid out. That was last about- June. And I know that because I was listening to it while I was uh, sick with food poisoning in, in uh, New Hampshire yeah. or in Maine actually. Yeah, and it was just like I, I laid out the case and kind of point by point by point, and I just like was really proud of that particular show. And I feel like we've done a lot of that since we've kind of perfected that formula. And so it's That's it's good, uh, it's good. Yeah. yeah. So I feel like I found my voice finally, but it took me <clears throat> damn near five years to finally get to a place where I felt comfortable with my own voice talking about what I was talking about. So what about you, Johnny? Oh, well, thank Sorry, you. Starts um, with Tom Woods. We know that. <laughs> Um, no, you know, it, it didn't start. So with Johnny, Woods. what? No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I'm fucking. So Johnny, when did Tom bitch. Woods uh, make you feel like you made it as a podcast? Now it's a fucking bitch. I got it. Do you want me to answer the question? I will. No, I, will. I, well, I yeah. told you to get ready to be interrupted every time you talk. <laughs> I, I, I made a promise I and I'm going to deliver it. <laughs> no, but seriously, go ahead. What? That, that. No, go ahead. For real. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you about it. Hey, this is great <laughs> radio, guys. Come on. <laughs> no, go, go ahead, Johnny. Okay. <laughs> that time was for we. I think we were really. We, I, that I was ready. I was going. Like, well, that was I'm, the real one for me. No, but that's like magical radio pause right there. That was actually. Oh yeah, no, I'm leaving all that in. I'm not editing yeah, this at all. Leave no, that shit in. Oh yeah. Um, oh yeah, it's good. It's it's like a, a money shot. But <laughs> magical you know, radio pause. It's a, it's a cool radio thing. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny and I were, were joking before the show about how we wanted to start like one of those, um, like, you know, those late night, like romance radio show yeah. things where they're like, all right, this song goes out to Donna, uh, who loves her boyfriend, Frank. The okay, song okay, is Donna. Okay, Mark Claire. Hold on. I can do this better than you. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, but definitely. You're, you're the host. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Samantha. When I think romantic voices, I don't think of Mark Claire. It's more Donna. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm not offended. Samantha, you know, we've been thinking about you. And uh, this song goes out to you, sweetheart, from Donnie. Rock and roll. It's called I Love You So Much. I Love Your Ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's a well-known uh, romance, uh, 50s uh, doo-wop song. Uh, Dear Donnie, the baby, <laughs> the baby is not yours. Bed, up. This is a great segue to how Tom Woods made you feel like you made it. So, as a Johnny, how, I'll give you a clean edit point. So, Johnny, what about you? I didn't need that because I'm not editing any of it, but go on. <laughs> you know what? I mean, I, I just, I, I was an audio engineer, and uh, what didn't hurt was the fact that I was in a band for 10 years or eight years before I started doing podcasts. Um, so, I, 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 don't, I didn't really feel like there was like a, a hindrance in talking to people, but my aha moment. And it really wasn't being a podcaster, uh, more or less. It was being a libertarian. So, like, that was the moment where I was like, yes, I'm a real fucking libertarian. I get the shit. I would have to say, probably Mance Raider on his show. So, probably about two years ago. Two years ago. 
where I was like, yeah, I'm a fucking libertarian. That was the moment that it hit, hit man. It wasn't about Wait, listening to it or being on it. What's that? Listening to it or being on it? What? What? Uh, I, mean, I mean, just getting it, getting the philosophy to its, you know. Lot. So, is the, it, Johnny? Let me ask you this: Is the question yeah. when did you stop feeling like a poser? Because I feel like when Johnny's start, answering a totally different question than he posed. Yeah, because <laughs> I'll tell you what: there is a, there is an aspect of this. Like when you first start your podcast, you're like, "Who should listen to me?" Mm-hmm. You know, oh, like well, I had. Wor- I mean, I would have to say probably hundred. I, I would have okay. to say Tom Woods. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> God damn! I mean, it's Tom Woods. I mean, I I, I felt like after a hundred, yeah, I'm gonna tag like, Tom Woods in this podcast, and he better retweet. Better, yeah. I mean, like it was like when I had Tom Woods, I'm like, I'm done. I'm cool. I got somewhere, it. somewhere right now, Tom Woods is feeling a tickle in his butthole, and that's our <laughs> mouth. <laughs> and then he tunes in. They're like, Tom, listen to a twenty four seven four minutes and thirteen seconds in, and he tunes in. He's like, and then Chris Spengel saying, and that's when Tom felt the tingle in his butthole. <laughs> <laughs> this song is dedicated to you, Tom. <laughs> this song's dedicated to you. The song is Donna. The song's called Spangle. I think that is a, a thing that all podcasters get, or maybe I mean I'm sure even Joe Rogan had when he started. Like you have, it's like imposter syndrome. Like you feel like you, why, like you're not worthy to be doing this, so to speak. Like when I started, I was like, I literally have no experience in in radio. I have no experience hosting anything. Um, I am just somebody who's read libertarian shit, and that's it. And so like, why why do I even belong here? So like, even even taking that leap, like it was hard to even start because at, at some point, I mean, you just have to do it, but. It, because you want to, because the product I wanted didn't exist, so I I had to start it if I wanted it, right? Um, but there is that yeah. thing where you're doing it, even as you're like interviewing people, you're like, I'm not qualified to be saying anything now. Like I'm, I don't know how to talk to Stefan Casella about uh, intellectual property. I'm doing it, but I I'm winging it, and I don't feel like I really belong here. All right, yeah. Chris, this is yeah. I, I think I still sort of feel that way. Like I feel like there are, I'm experienced. Like I, I have a lot of good wins in terms of my podcasting career, my, you know, my day job and, and uh, other things. And then a lot of experience. I mean, I've been reading this stuff and studying libertarianism and, and politics for almost 20 years at this point. So I know a lot of stuff. Like when I talk to normies, I go, wow, I really do know a lot. But like when I talk to, when I listen to you interview some of these super smart people, the both of you, I'm like, I don't know anything, you know, and so that's I, why you I, don't do that many interviews because you don't want to feel like <laughs> dumb. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> we're really, I mean, Mark and I have the shit pack, you know, we're good. Uh, we th- know. That's exactly why I do it. I mean, they're, honestly, they're, I got a little jealous of Mark at the National Libertarian Convention in 2018 Ooh. because we're walking around and Mark, everybody knows Mark and he has a personal relationship with everybody. I'm like, okay, that's kind, so that's he kind of cool. the same way about me at Pork Fest day one when he showed up. That's true. That's true. Me and that's Johnny true. were walking around together because he had already been there for a day. And everywhere I go, they're like, Johnny, hey, Johnny, yeah. Johnny Anna. Oh, my God, it's a Johnny guy. Hey, Johnny. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, hey, what's I think up, there's uh, a ton hey. of benefit to doing interviews and that being kind of the model of your show. And, you know, you you grow, I think, a lot quicker and it it is it, like, and I'm not gonna say it's easy because it's not easy. It's, oh, it's definitely it's not so easy, but I know what fucking, you mean. Yeah, like if you interview somebody who's written a book, you have to at least know what the research book is about. the goddamn book. Right, read I the used book to read every page of any book of someone had I was interviewing. Now I uh, read a few chapters and skim the rest. Of them. Yeah, and then like, and then you notes. have to like s- yeah. sync your schedule with their schedule, which is the hardest part. And then you have to get like Walter Block and his. New Orleans uh, uh, office to figure out Skype. Like we, we, we did, we did interviews in 2013, and we had Ron Paul on, and that was like a big. We made national news with Ron Paul about Rand Paul in 2013. But I hated doing interviews so much because I'd have to leave work early, or I couldn't get them to sound good. And I just said, I'm not doing this anymore. And then you guys came along, and it's like I don't need to do this. Like I have no desire to do it, and so. <laughs> It's I have more fun kind of it's a more of a social thing for me having my friends over and talking to them. Well, this is what it's about. I mean, we, 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 we do this because it's we're talking to great people and with yeah. great ideas and it's kind of a hobby. It's fun. I mean, yeah. like, like there would be nothing more than I would like. I love my job doing this. Right. And yeah. I would be a fool to say, well, I'd rather like dig a hole than talk right. to brilliant <laughs> people's. Like that are out there and like, we're fucking fortunate. I mean, like, I really want to say we're fortunate guys. We're like, we've been around for five years, 
six years plus, maybe you, Chris, like 20. Like what I want to say is I'm joking about the 20, by the way. I know. Yeah. All right. But like what I'm going to say is <laughs> like, it's, it's all about like just being fucking like we're doing it. We're doing it. We're talking to people that the average person doesn't have the opportunity to do it. Yeah, I think you We're see blessed. that on social. Yeah, you see that on social media and you, you know, man, I wish I could do that. I wish like you see other people get jealous of your experiences. But then sometimes I'm such a miserable asshole. I'm like, God, I don't want to go to that fucking convention and fly all the way to New Orleans and sweat my balls off. And then, you know, and other people are sitting there going, wow, it's so I wish I could go to that. I wish I could do that. You know, and then you go, oh, I'm an a- I'm an asshole. But yeah, it is. Yeah. It is humbling to get to do stuff that like I, I don't know especially you we're guys lucky. talk to all this like, we're lucky look, man we're lucky. yeah like you look at your phone rolodex and you go how the fuck is your Ron brook and uh how are these my people phone? in my fucking I, the other day why right. do i have their numbers or their emails right like i, I forget who i was talking to him. i said something like the other day like i just realized i have roger stone and jesse ventura in my cell phone <laughs> like what what is what is life right now like why is this even Ron a thing? Paul, no i thing. have him on my phone yeah, I have him too. I mean, like, this is like just my contact. So. Like, we could prank Noam Chomsky right now. You guys want to prank Noam Chomsky? I've got his number. Yes, let's do it. Wait, do you really? Because I want to interview Noam Chomsky. Yeah. Okay. If that's true, send it to me off air uh, or on air. Just, just blast it out. Just blast Noam Chomsky's like, phone number. I have Bill Weld's business phone. card. It goes to the highest bidder. <laughs> He had a burner. Phone. I have Bill Weld's media guy's business card who said, of course, just email me and we'll get right back to you. <laughs> I'd give you one guess if he got right back to no, me or not. He did. Just he one. did. He did. Hey, no. What? Hey, no. I looked at, I looked at Bill, Bill Weld is the at, kind of candidate that just is awesome. I love I looked at Bill Weld at the I Indiana love Bill Weld. And Bill I Weld. go, I'm the literally the only libertarian media outlet that will interview you. And he said, no, thanks. Okay. All right, bye. Really? Yeah, I, he he humored me for a second at the LNC. He was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," and I was like, "I, you know, I love I love to interview you, man. You know, um, and I'm not. I even said like, I made a joke like, don't worry, I'm not gonna coke you. You know, I'll, I'll be on the up and up.' And uh, he's like, "Oh yeah, go, yeah, go talk to my guy Joe Joe over here. He'll he'll take care of you." And I talked to the guy, that guy, and he uh, he seemed nice enough, but I also knew he was kind of bullshitting me. Uh, he's <laughs> then, really and, uh, tur- turns out he was. Yeah, it's really business schedule. You know, so. Uh, let's let's yeah, let's do this. Let's stop packed. bragging about ourselves. So I get asked. Oh, what? That's the whole what? point of the I show. Know. Fucking, you know, uh, guys, connections breaking up. Hold on, can't hear you guys. Uh, by the way, Chris, sorry, but what I want to say is we're very fortunate that we're in our positions that we're in. We've been doing this shit for a while, guys. We're f- true, but we put ourselves in them. It's not like no, you know, but it's not good it, fortune. It's a lot of work. It's hard work. It's a lot of work, guys. It's a lot of work. So, well, that's what I was about to say is that I get asked all the time. I got asked today on Twitter, like, how do I start a podcast? And the thing is, you just start a podcast and any creative endeavor and you both work in creative arts like you can. It doesn't matter what the cre- if it's stand up comedy, if it's music, if it's an instrument, if it's podcasting, you have to start doing it because you love doing it. You do it for a long time for free. It probably will cost you a lot of money. And then eventually people will go, you're really good at this. And they'll start paying you to do it. And you'll get opportunities. Like I'm at the point now where I'm getting opportunities that I can't believe that I have these opportunities. But I go, I shouldn't feel that way because I worked really hard to get to the point where I'm good enough to well, you're backstage at Joe Rogan, you know, because uh, all really because you started this first podcast is inevitably what really did get yeah, you there in a way. Yeah, I mean, the ability to do this podcast, I just started the podcast. We had 70 listeners our first year, and that was in 2012. And you go, well, nobody's listening. It's cost me probably $3,000 this year to do this. I, I Like, why am I doing this? And if your goal is to make money, to be famous, to to build an audience, like, then you're not really going to be successful at it. It's you have to do it because you love doing it. And like for me, the benefit of podcasting is not that you can build a Patreon that'll be a nice second income. That's nice. It's the friendships. It's the relationships with people like you guys. It's, it's you know, the like we have a wall pool party on Saturday with probably 40 people showing up that are involved locally here with the podcast in some form or fashion. You know, a couple people coming in from out of town. And you go like that's the real benefit is that you have fun doing it with people that you really like and it becomes your social circle. And you know, you just have to start doing it. And eventually it turns into something that creates those cool opportunities that gets you an audience that does pay you money. Right. Man. You know, it's like I, I'm looking, we have a new magazine. It's it's not a magazine, it's like a I saw it. Looks cool, man. Good yeah, congrats. 
it's I have nothing to do with it. Like it's just one listener listened when I said uh, last year ago, hey, I want Wall to be a platform where if you're a creator, like I started doing this shit seven, eight years ago. I paid tons of money to get us to this point. Now I want to give my clout to young new creators who just want to get up started. Like guys like Brian Nichols, who <coughs> I think is a really interesting guy. Who I just interviewed yesterday. Yeah, he's such a good guy. And I go, you need your own show. And we immediately got him up to speed. Boss Hogg has kind of set the template for what a local libertarian show could be. And Ryan just came out and goes, I want to start a quarterly journal. Are you okay with that? And I go, sure. And then I get, I get it a PDF of the final version. I go, this is great. Like it's diverse. It's got every angle of libertarianism. It p- pisses some people off and people love other parts. It's like, and then the second issue is even better. And you go, I really love that I'm involved in a project that when I get something, I got, I got something from We Are Libertarians from Amazon today that I had almost nothing to do with. And I went, this is really cool. Like that to that's me. That's awesome. Was, dude. Yeah. That was yeah. like another milestone. Like it was another that's, milestone. Where you go, wow. I built a platform that people are using to build cool stuff. Well, I mean, like, here's the thing, Chris, is we can use you as an example. Like we can use you as a, a, a point of which, you know, if you guys are starting- as a launch pad, you might say, no, that. it's a- Oh wait, that's the old, that's the old show. Sorry. No, it's, it's a goal. It's a goal, man. And you can blast off towards that goal, right? <laughs> there you go. That's the right tie-in. All right. So, uh, but no, I mean, like, Chris, I mean, I, I'm really proud of you, man. And you've been doing some great shit, but this is what we're about, man. We're like, we don't do it because of money. None of us. I mean, I know Mark Clary. That would be very foolish. It costs a ton <laughs> Mark, Mark Clary's like, man, I fucking love this shit. I love doing podcasts. But goddamn, we're broke. And I'm like, I know, bro, because... Well, well, I'm not broke, but I'm not. I'm not rich. Okay. I, I, I could be. I could have a lot more okay. money if I never podcasted. Let's put it that All right, way. Whatever. What that's, I'm that's saying a fact. is, <laughs> is that we're not rich, and a lot of these other people, these outlets out there, are, and so us as libertarians, it's so beneficial to hear the praise and like, fuck yeah, Johnny, give it to him, like fuck the man. This is what- and that was just in the bedroom yeah. the other night. Bam, America. Yeah, it was. But like, <laughs> it's all about just being yourself, getting out there, spreading that message because we're doing this because we love to, not because of money. And that was like, that actually, uh, no, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but but actually, I did because screw you, you interrupted me for the first 10 minutes of the show. Fuck you. Uh, <laughs> I think something you said there, though, is, is very important. Um, <laughs> Being yourself is like one of the biggest challenges of, of becoming a podcast host. Cause when you first start out, you're like, all right, I gotta, now I gotta become a podcast host. So you're like trying to be a host. And it very, I mean, definitely listening back to my very early episodes, it's, it's cringeworthy listening to myself. Uh, our, our friend Rico, a part of the show here, one of our regular contributors, uh, he said, made a joke because we went back and listened to my interview with G. Edward Griffin, which is like episode 13. And he said that was the, that was the genesis of my Gary Johnson parody voice. Cause that's how ridiculous I sounded. I was like, well, now we're going to talk about the Federal <laughs> Reserve with G. Edward Griffin. And I, I like, I, I can't even listen to it. It's so bad because I'm just like trying to be That's enthusiastic bad, and trying yeah. to be, but I, I don't need to, I realize at some point you don't need to try because I am enthusiastic. Like I already am enthusiastic about the right. ideas. I don't need to add extra enthusiasm, but in my, in your, I think it's subconscious too. Like I wasn't, you know, I wasn't in my head saying now I must be more enthusiastic. I think it's just, it's, I think it's, it ties back to imposter syndrome. Like I feel like I need to become a host because I'm not one now. So I have to do this extra thing to be a host, but really, especially when it comes to podcasting, it's really more about how, how, how become, how you can become the most comfortable version of yourself hey. while sitting in front of this microphone and while talking Mark, to our guests. really quick. You know what I found was the most like great skill that we learn is thinking on your feet. Cause sometimes uh, uh, sure. somebody will give you something and you'll be like, Whoa, I didn't expect that. And you have, to- or sometimes you get a 10 second answer to something you thought would be five minutes. You're like, Whoa, hold on. I have to talk more now. We've done it. We react to content. Down my phone. Yeah. But there's like, I mean, so many skills, <laughs> but like, I was on Tinder just now. Hold on. What, what? Like how, like, I'm going to ask you guys, um, when you guys have a guest, somebody of importance, I mean, Chris, maybe you, you have some experience in this, but Mark, especially, how long is that? Ooh, especially, especially you. Yes. Um, how long do you spend <laughs> researching your guest? I mean, you have to learn who they are, what they've done. A lot of people don't realize how much time is spent in pre-show and just prepping for the show. Oh, yeah. 
I think I think my preparation has evolved over the years. Uh, like I, I used to really, really, really prep. I mean, I would read like multiple books by the guest that's coming on, and, and a ton, and like listen to any interview I could find. They've done. Now I do a version of that that's not as intensive. Um, especially now that I feel more comfortable speaking on the fly and as a host. Sometimes I like to go into things with a little level of ignorance if I can because I want to kind of do an interview from the point of view of someone who doesn't know who this person is and doesn't know about every little thing so I do research in the sense that the fact of the matter is any guests I invite on the show I probably already have an idea who they are and it's not like the first time I've heard of them so I I might do a little more background research to make sure I I, there's not something I missed that was awesome they did or some book they wrote that I'd like to talk about Um, but I don't do the the intensive intense I mean I used to come prepared with a whole list of like 20 questions that I, I try to get to now I don't I might jot down a couple things just to, you know, have something to look at, but I really often, you know, once I get into an interview, I find myself forgetting the whole thing and I'm just having a conversation. And I think that's the biggest skill. So, I do still prep, of course, but you know, a lot of people I have on, I know they're maybe uh, they host a show or they I'll know a couple things about them. I'll know generally what they're about, but then I'll be like, okay, Let's have that in the back of my mind, but now let's just go and have a regular conversation with this person and take it wherever it goes. I like to go into interviews not knowing you know, exactly what topics I'm going to cover. I'll have an idea, but if it goes in a different direction, I end up, you know, if I end up talking about immigration for 15 minutes on a show I wasn't even pr- planning on bringing it up on, that's totally great because you know a lot of times guests will even apologize. They'll say, like, oh, I'm sorry I'm going on this rant about this thing. I'm like, no, don't apologize. This is great. This is a different direction than I planned, and it's organic, and it's awesome, so let's just go down this you know, track because there's no rules here. It's a podcast. There's no producer chirping in my ear. No, we're sp- we're here to talk about these seven topics, so we better stay on those. And that that's the freedom of podcasting is that we can make a show whatever we want, even as we're doing it. Uh, much like this show right now. You know, <laughs> this is a perfect example. We go into this with no ideas at all about what we're going to talk about literally none, and here we are. You know, forty minutes, forty yeah, the, fifty minutes the later, uh, having a great the experience talk. carries you through. There you go. Yeah, so, sounds like so a very we, psychedelic. Statement. Yeah, we don't do so we don't do guests, but we do a topic. And so part of my prep is that I am constantly reading news articles or magazine articles or listening to political podcasts. I listen to a wide spectrum of of news podcasts, not just libertarian shows. I rarely listen to a lot of libertarian shows unless I'm prepping on a specific topic. And then then like let's say it's about like immigration, then I'll dive into Mises, Cato. Uh, libertarian angle some of their podcasts uh, look and see if like one of you guys have interviewed somebody on that particular subject uh, and so I would say and so like this last episode were was the protest in Puerto Rico and Hong Kong and I personally listened to a bunch of different podcasts news podcasts specifically so I understood what was going on I didn't get a lot of time to read But I have a research staff now, and my main researcher is a guy named Sam Schultz, and he probably read about 50 different articles and linked all those into our show notes. And if you go look at any any main episode of We Are Libertarians and click on the show notes, it's usually a 20-page PDF uh, with uh, a college outline that I'm kind of using as my guide where we're giving the basic facts of what's happening, and then we kind of go into more granular details, and then we give you some analysis and what we do is we take the current event, we take that topic and you know, give you the details of what's going on because most people don't know what's going on and they have no context to what you're talking about and then give you a libertarian perspective on it. Um, and so our guest essentially is the main topic that people are talking about in the news that week. So when you go and talk to your friends about immigration or what's happening at the border, for instance, you have... Uh, two hours worth of prepped material in an entertaining way that you can go, wow, hey, I just heard this thing on this podcast about that. And so I would say into every two hour show, we're usually between one and three hours, but around 90 to 90 to 120 minutes, um, 10 to 20 hours of prep amongst the hosts and my research staff. Okay. So we <laughs> really try that was all yeah, we, I was asking. Yeah, we, we really, Thank yeah. Thank you, Chris. We love you. That was a great answer, though. Johnny literally just wanted the amount of time. <laughs> He's like, I was just waiting for the, for the, the actual Johnny should do Johnny should do more prep. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I, actually, I do about two or three hours of prep per show for just my show. And then right. all the other shows, I mean, same thing. About an hour to two hours, 
But you do like really. I gotta really commend you, Johnny, on, on like the level of production value that you put into the show, especially like the 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 introductions that you do. And I mean, you really turn it into like a radio drama, yeah. and it's really like you put insane amounts I, of work. I want, in. like, not, if you guys not have so not listened to a blast prep, off, like how much post show do you do? Right. Well, it takes the pre show to do that. Yeah, to get right. to that part of the pre show. Yeah. But yeah, it's all it's all post and pre prep. Well, it's really I, impressive. I, I'm, I'm gonna give it. Up. I'm way too my, lazy. My editor is the best, <laughs> man. I mean, me and him are our best friends. So like, we come up with these ideas before the show even happens. So we're always coming up with crazy ideas. So like, I I don't know if you guys heard that soccer mom Cindy intro, like the old the lady calling, and she's like, Fuck. I saw you post it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, she just chews me out over the phone. But that's like a re- reoccurring theme that's going on right now with the show. So we're recording her as she calls in. And I don't know if she's a libertarian. I don't know. Wait, she's a real person? Yeah. I thought it was a character. I thought it was too. Like, I thought it was a joke. Because <laughs> like, uh, we talked about this a long time ago. But no, this isn't like, this is a real person that we don't know. But I think she's, uh, I don't know if she's doing it on purpose. I don't know. But it's funny. I'm like, fucking do it. Like, I think it's great. We're like highlighting her because she obviously is a libertarian. I think she's a libertarian. So she's trying to pretend that she isn't. And so it's great, man. Soccer mom, Cindy, man. It's great. Johnny, I just want to know how many hours you put into editing each show. I don't. uh, Well, Johnny puts none in now because he hires his. Yeah, but I'm saying like, how much time does it take your editor to do one one show? Like, I. Uh, I, Well, me and him talked. Six to eight hours. Jeez. Holy jeez. Mark, how about you? <laughs> <laughs> Less. You know, I've actually really perfected the art of, of editing. Like, I've gone through phases. Like, when I first started, I edited myself <laughs> poorly. And by edited, I mean, like, vomited some audio out. Like, <laughs> what are you laughing about, Johnny? Because you haven't perfected shit, dude. <laughs> you oh, can wow. perfect being lazy. <laughs> Wow, Johnny's like the dad wow, you. This guy. Johnny's like the dad you don't want to talk to when you grow up. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> what I it, it, once again, if you let me tell the whole story, <laughs> I, I've perfected the art of efficiently getting a podcast edited while making it still sound natural and not overly edited. I don't obviously I don't do the level of production that you do because I I mean I that's just not what we do. I'm trying to have I'm trying to produce something that sounds like a natural sounds like an unedited conversation because it largely is. I will edit for, you know, certain things here and there. If my guest stumbles for a few seconds, I'm not going to leave necessarily leave that in there for everyone to hear. If my if if there's an awkward pause, not an awesome radio pause like we had earlier, mm-hmm. uh no, that, I'll edit that stuff was like meant that to out. be there, right? Yes, that was meant yeah. to be there. Uh, I, I can I can now record an interview and quickly sort of spot edit it afterwards with mental and physical notes I take during and, and get it done real quick. But I, I went through phases. When I first started, I like I said, I vomited out audio. I had no idea what I was even doing. And then I ended up hiring an editor, which actually was a great move because I just couldn't do do the kind of editing he did at the time or at all, any at all. Uh, but then as I went along, I started to, uh, you know, take on more of the process once again myself and then it kind of became a mix where I could hire people to edit when I need when I you know need time to but was able to you know give them the right notes to for them to do it relatively efficiently now I just kind of like doing it myself because I can do it fairly quickly not perfect as, as Johnny would say uh, far far from perfect I believe it was the quote, uh, or, or <laughs> yeah. nowhere oh, with a fair amount of laughter okay uh, so hold on yes. but like all credit goes out to my engineer and producer Ben Weagle so Ben thank you so much oh for sure but you're definitely like you have that vision and you have that style like i told you the first time i heard the rock like we don't edit anything we do live to tape it's like a radio show and i tell all my guest hosts i'm not editing so if you better just learn how to talk and uh yeah. all of all of my co-hosts we have probably about don't stop and say can you edit this right out? yeah we have uh, about 20 different happening. people that kind of rotate in and like i just say to all of them like you, if you show up it's live it's like you're responsible for what you it's, say it's like, what it is baby it yeah. is yeah i mean i've only edited a couple things it's all live to tape it's all live mixed so when the first time i heard the you know your your previous show i went fuck this is really good and then i heard the radio drama i was like johnny's like so, if it weren't for your vision, oh, that is awesome. The radio, yeah, like insane. it wouldn't. So if it good. weren't for your vision, then Thank it wouldn't you. be there. But yeah, it's great. It's really up. It's you've you've exceeded even that. Like you've kind of moved up. So, well, like I, honestly, like me and my producer, we have we have talked over like beers, and we like we're like, is this like too much of a pause here, Johnny? I'm like, yep. Is this too long of a pause? Yeah, 
you know, yeah. but then I'm like, use your artistic <laughs> flair. If there is a moment that needs to be, it's art. Like when you're editing, it's an art form. When you're behind that console and you're like looking at waves and you're like, bam, I need to pause here. And it's, it's uh, utilizing that time. Timing is everything in comedy, right? And same with politics. When we're delivering a message, it's all about pacing. So it's, it's good to have somebody with an artistic uh, ear, not I'm not going to say I, but ear, when they can sit down and be like, yeah, we need a pause here. We need it shortened here, whatever. But to me, that's fucking art, man. And learning timing is everything, everything. Yeah, you can't you can't really learn that from a how to edit audio book no. or how to edit a podcast manual. You can't. It's, it's, it's a feel thing. Yeah, yeah but it's a, it's a feel. And I, I have a good team and I know like I have a lot of I give a lot of credit to them as much as I can because they're the ones doing it. I like I hated doing it. Like I got to the point where I'm like, fuck, I hate my life. I want to die. And I, <laughs> I hated it because I had such a high standard for my editing and I, I did it all myself, everything, all the time. And we had two hour shows, man. It took me up to 12 hours to do a show every week. Yeah, yeah. I think the thing that I like, I edit audio for a living for a radio show. So I like, I, I see the work that you put into it. And I go, this is crazy. And it's like the, the, the first time I got the comic and heard the radio drama, and I was like, Johnny's just doing really creative, cool stuff that nobody else is. And like, Mark, you. I think what's special about Lions of Liberty is that your ego, if you even have an ego, doesn't get in the way of any of it. And you just like, oh, I have one. Don't I, but you, but you like one. really let other people shine, and it's really great. Like because it's so it's really great to see what both of you are doing. And I think I think the takeaway from this episode really is that Roger Paxton sucks. <laughs> God. Hey, when you're not here, we get to talk. <laughs> no, Roger. Let's praise Roger because this man did an amazing job putting on Pork Fest uh, with his wife Jessica once again. It was awesome, and it's awesome every time. And you guys got to get back there out next year. That's my pledge. We're VIP we're discussing if we're all going to go back pass. again. But if you guys go back, I'm in. Get the VIP Let's pass, the guys. Seriously. Well, you gotta have the, you gotta be VIP, or you're basically not. <sighs> you're there. just not there. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> free ass grabs, Johnny. Yeah, that's right. Speaking of Roger, us the three of us <laughs> along with Roger do form a libertarian supergroup known as the League of Liberty Podcasters. Really? I'm hoping to bring that Patreon bonus show back to our Patreon feed very soon. We will see how it goes. We had scheduling issues because uh, Roger was, uh, you know, with Porkfest, uh, you know, doing everything with that. Johnny's in the middle of a, uh, well, Let's not many not more in the middle. Johnny, uh, Roger's high no, as a kite was... right now. <laughs> Well, not, yeah, I, I want to be cuddling. No, I'm saying that's why we had to delay the show for a few months. We had, we all had issues getting getting our schedules aligned. It's very difficult when you're libertarian superheroes. You yeah. know, there's a lot of threats. To <laughs> it really all, is but. at the point, and I don't know about you guys, but with the growth of your networks and my network, and then just my personal portfolio of podcasts at this point is well, you've got all these podcasts you're doing now, even outside of libertarian. I, I, stuff, I don't. So. I just I'm like I'm. I'm at my max. So it is. So we apologize to the League of Liberty listeners. We are we're all for uh, becoming more successful. And so it's just becoming tough. It's really just we, we've gotten uh, our hands in more yeah. stuff at the end of the day. Yeah. Like, like Biden. Like Biden. What? Yeah. what? <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much. I had a blast. It's fun. I guess Johnny's Johnny signing us off now. Is that what's show. happening, Mark? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't we do a quick wrap-up of everything we got going on in life? Better. And maybe I can convince Johnny and Chris to stick around for a few minutes to, to pounce through some sec some questions I got from the Lions of Liberty Pride, our amazing supporters on Patreon. Find out more at patreon.com slash Lions of Liberty. But first, Johnny, tell everybody what's been going on since, I mean, it's been, I don't know when the last time you were on the main show was, but probably sometime, well, probably uh, Thanksgiving. But you've really grown the Launchpad Media Network since then. You've got a lot happening. Tell us all about everything going on with Launchpad Media. Yeah, we just have a bunch of rebels. We have everyone, and we have every podcaster that nobody wants, but they're badass. And and, I, <laughs> and that is what's great about Launchpad Media. And we have great writers. We have uh, Jeremy Clymer. Matthew Hicks, Shane Sweeney. Uh, we have some great writers who have been contributing to the uh, network. So thank you guys. And uh, we're, we're just, we're doing really good, man. Like we have a podcast every day, seven days a week, a new show from somebody. So I'm just honored to be here. And I'm honored to have this goddamn network that I'm building. 
So I like that you're honored to be here as part of as part of that yeah, whole speech really, about plugging yeah, out yourself. Good. That was awesome. Uh, <laughs> like for a second, you be you thought you were accepting a, an Academy podcast award, uh, and then you went back. You, uh, Spangle, you've got a lot going on. You've you are now producing uh, this this podcast with uh, Miss Pat, who's hilarious. So I'm really enjoying the Pat Down. You got your hands in a lot of stuff. Feel free to plug away, and I will plug for you uh, the awesome job Hody Johnson's been doing over at We Are Libertarians hosting. Really, I felt like he's taken a lot of the burden off me because I was worried about how I'm going to be, be the debate guy as I've been in the past, and uh, I'm going to do it eventually, but it's nice that Hody has been there to host all these libertarian debates uh, so early on in this process. I'll get around to it eventually, but he's been killing yeah, me. Hody I mean, is the man. He, uh, <laughs> The Kim Ruff campaign should send him a fruit basket because <laughs> – Thank you. Because <laughs> I, I listened to those and I went. Careful. Be careful. Uh, I go. My wife. I know. That's why I'm, I'm saying <laughs> Kim Ruff is, is the, the, the diamond in uh, that. Yeah, but Johnny's got to pay for the fruit basket. Yeah. That's, that's the issue here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Chris, I can't afford a fruit yeah. basket. <laughs> Damn, dude. What do you so think? We have, so We Are Libertarians has a lot going on. So, yeah, like, Hody is a tremendous asset, and we're we're adding people all the time. I'm in talks to add another show with a, a person that I think would be tremendous at doing a podcast. But we just added... I have an idea, but I won't say. We just uh, added Trisha Stewart, who is hilarious and uh, is an anarchist. The show is called Ginger Archie, and she does these Facebook Live conversations with people where people ask live questions. And uh, I said, you know, well, you really should make this a podcast. So come on to the Wall Network and we'll distribute. So Wall really has become like a distribution network. I mean, I don't do any editing, but I spend hours taking all of our various shows and putting them on every different platform. Um, and so we just added her. We just launched two different feeds, Libertarian Debates and Libertarian Politics and Policy. And we're taking Hody's work with the debates, and we're going to expand that. And I'm hoping that Hody will host more debates about uh, topics and, and issues, not just the debates. As the, the, I'll come debate something. Yeah, the, I'm inviting myself yeah, on that'd right be now. Great. <laughs> and so there's that. Feed, and then the why is Johnny laughing? Why is that funny? So we did a hundred episodes of Wall Daily, which <laughs> were like twenty minute episodes, and we covered a ton of different policies and politics and and, a, and stuff that I wouldn't have covered on the main show, and I really liked it. But I think it kind of overwhelmed our main feed and wanted to separate it out and didn't want to do it daily because everybody's life was starting to shift. So that's the wall daily is going to fold into that. And then we got the wall reader. So we have a new quarterly journal. Um, we have. Uh, yeah, we're just we're cranking out content left and right and and on a lot of really diverse, cool subjects. It's it's a much different wall than it was four years ago. That's for sure. So very proud of it and uh, really like the more intellectual direction that we're taking. Me personally, um, I have my first time, uh, first full time, well, not full time, my first uh, consulting gig doing a podcast for a show called Leaders and Legends, which I don't know that a lot of libertarians would instantly want to listen to the show, but it's, it's about the growth of the city of Indianapolis and kind of how did Indianapolis chart that course. And it's a really great crash course on the establishment of a large city and how they think and why they make the decisions they make. And so you may not agree with the policy stuff, but you're at least going to get to understand how lawmakers and politicians and, and bureaucrats start to think. So that's a really cool show that I love doing. And then you mentioned the Pat Down, which uh, I met this comedian named Miss Pat a couple, two, three years ago at the Bob and Tom show where I work on a daily basis. Uh, she is one of the funniest human beings on the planet. She is about to be uber famous. She has a. It's honestly really funny. Like I, I wouldn't just. Well, maybe I would just say that if you pay me, but you didn't pay me, so I'm I'm saying it for real. It's it's yeah. hilarious. I crack up every. Episode. It is. It's it's genuinely. I am in tears every single time we record. We just went to the Montreal Comedy Festival just for laughs, and Howie Mandel was our first guest, and it was just crazy. And she comes up with some of the craziest stuff, and uh, she's from the the middle of Atlanta. And she's teaching me about black culture, and I'm the whitest person that she's probably ever met. And it's uh, and our deep. I don't think it's a problem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, uh, I think we can pretty much settle yeah, that one yeah, right yeah, now. Pretty wise. The other co host, Dion Curry, is hilarious. Yeah, it's really a funny podcast. It's in the top 25 of comedy right now. We got up to four on the comedy charts, we got in the top 20 of the main charts after she went on Joe Rogan. Uh, so it's personally an enormous opportunity for me. And of uh, like to see your name in the description of like a top 20 podcast 
was a really cool achievement that I didn't fully appreciate until like a month later. And I went, huh, you know, and so uh, please take a listen to that because what I'm doing and I'm about to go back on Al, uh, Al Jackson and Frank Caliendo's podcast this weekend. Um, so my day job is for a a radio comedy show. Yeah. And like, I'm trying to take libertarianism to, you know, places like a, a comedy podcast. We talked a lot about cops this last episode and, um, and criminal justice reform. And I'm trying to take it to places that it's not seen. So please support my efforts in that because then they go, Hey, libertarians, uh, supporting libertarians. And, you know, please don't say anything, uh, offensive to them so they don't fire me. So, uh, don't be yourself, libertarians. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> well, that totally contradicts okay, the previous okay, lesson about right. trying to be yeah, your best yeah, self. But you know what? Let's ignore that. Whatever. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. Well, it's been a blast having you guys on. It's always great to reunite with the League of Liberty, or at least three quarters of it. <laughs> yeah, <I think> it's <laughs> Until next right, time, so. guys. You want to join me? Can you join me in the sign off? You know the live long, live free, right? No. You know it. I say live long, you live free. Okay. All right. Gentlemen, League of Liberty, Johnny, Chris, it's always a pleasure. Until next time, live long! Live free! Live free. And live free. All right, you guys have never heard my show before. No, That's fine. Never to the end. end. And live free. <laughs> I got it. All right. Well, it's been fun. Oh, my God.